Hello, hello. Welcome to what would be the first episode of this series. Um, this was a VOD that I did. This was an episode I did the very first of 2020 um well this was the first episode i did in 2020 um we'll kick this one off with dennis martin this is a really strip this is really bizarre like this is a bizarre case um This one is just, again, really bizarre. You're probably hearing my fan, because that's the only thing that's really going right now. But, um... Yeah, when I edit this out, it's going to be nothing but music. I'm going to add some music in the background, hopefully. But, um... Yeah, this is about Dennis Martin. So, Dennis Lloyd Martin was born on June 20th, 1962. His father, William Bill Martin. His grandfather, Clyde, and his brother, Douglas, were all preparing for a trip to the Smoky Mountains you know, for Father's Day. In June of 1969, the group arrived to their campsite on June 12th. The Martin family set out for a walk from the Cades Cove campground where they were staying, and they continued on for several more miles in the warm summer weather. They moved along Ledbetter Ridge above the left side of Anthony Creek made their final walk of the day to Russell Field, a grassy clearing in the forest with panoramic views across the Smokies. Then the Martins camped the night and headed on June 14th for the 90-minute walk to walk east to Spinsfield. Then the trip became a nightmare for the entire family and community around. Around 4.30 p.m., Dennis and Douglas were playing with some older kids from another family. Then Dennis vanishes. Between 6 and 6.45, a man named Harold Key, who was 45 years old at the time, heard a scream. He notices a man hiding in the bush near Sea Branch, southwest of Cades Cove, about 7 miles from Spencefield. from Spence Field. At 7.30, a naturalist by the name of Terry Chilcote and his wife arrived at Kate's Cove. They joined in the search and also found nothing. At 8.30, William and Clyde reported Dennis missing to the park rangers. Then 2.5 inches of rain started coming down by 9 p.m. Even in the rain, the search for Dennis turned up nothing. At 5 a.m. the next morning, Blount, Blount County or Blount County, and Surveyor County rescue squads, along with volunteers and hikers, gathered on Boat Mountain Road. By 1 p.m., the search party grew to 240 people, still turned up empty-handed for the day.
By 6 p.m. on June 16th, the search party grew over 250 and still turned up no clues in the pouring rain. The search party grew as the hours ticked away. Hours turned into days. Planes, vehicles, and even scuba gear were used in the search. Nothing. On June 17th, searchers found a shoe instead of footprints from a young boy. A searcher shot himself in the leg for a leg for reasons unknown. Still, no Dennis Martin. Self-proclaimed psychics were claiming where to find Dennis. Nothing. A rock took out a plane's landing gear. By June 21st, the search party reached a whopping 1,400 people. Psychic Jean Dixon claimed to have visions of Dennis's last breath or last breathing. On June 23rd, the search party reduced to 427 despite the heavy rainfall of 9.5 inches. By June 25th, Officials declared the search ended. By June 29th, park officials ended all search major search operations. The Martin family offered a $5,000 reward. By today's standards, that's more than $10,000. Well, for this to offer no clues, they had to stumble on some, they either had to stumble over clues or they had complete, yeah, like I said, they missed some stuff by stumbling over clues or that the place was just too damn big. They covered an area of 26 acres and found nothing. Despite all the effort they put into this search, all of a sudden was this child size shoe print. By September 11th, all searches for Dennis Martin came to a complete close. This was nicknamed the largest missing person search in the park's history. I know this episode is going to be kind of short because there's not much real to it, but it is a short, kind of a short summary, kind of packed it in there. With the official timeline, or I should say with the timeline coming to an official close with the search ended, it's time to dive into theories surrounding what may have happened to the young Dennis Martin on a fateful family trip. The first theory is that he was eaten. It was theorized that he was eaten and carried off. During the summertime, food for bears likely decreased. Also, bears are said to be much dangerous in the summer and are not prone to attacking and are capable of attacking humans. Some people believe that Dennis Martin was the victim of a more vicious attack by cannibalistic feral humans who are said to live undetected in a national park. And the reason nothing was ever found of this body or clothing was because they hid far, they were hidden far from the view and the safety of their own colony. The Smoky Mountains is a big place. And I can see how easy it is to get lost in the mountains. A cannibal? No evidence of, uh, uh, that cannibalism was ever found. There was no evidence to suggest cannibalism. But it would not 
the other the realm of possibility I mean this one's strange I mean this is gonna be a short episode anyways uh, the next one is gonna be light longer a lot longer than this the second theory is that he became lost and perished due to natural causes. Park officials believe that he got lost and died to some natural causes. Some believe he actually drowned to death after falling into the water. It's not that hard of a theory to believe. But like, like the last theory, there's really no evidence to suggest that he, there are no clues that was discovered to even confirm this. Uh, I mean, there were scuba divers on that trip, so it wouldn't be hard to be like, all right, something amiss about this, Let's just. There were scuba divers here. We found something, you know. The last, the third and final theory is that he was kidnapped. This was the most popular theory. Is that he was abducted and taken out of the park. Many believe that early in the search, believe. Many people concluded that early in the search, Harold Key described a scream he heard as, quote, an enormous, sickening scream, end quote. Key later told News Sentinel writer Carson Brewer, quote, I thought, in re hold on, in regards to the man that he saw, which authorities didn't believe at the time, uh, he said that he was, a, quote, an unkept man, end quote, and Harold Key would, would later go on to say, quote, I thought he might have been the moonshiner, end quote. Years after the Dennis' disappearance, a ginseng hunter found a child skeleton in about three miles down here from where Dennis went missing. Apparently, he was found in, there was a tree a few miles from where uh, Dennis' last mark, or from where Dennis last seen, there was a tree with like child uh, bones stuffed inside. The man who found this waited to report the skeleton since he illegally taken ginseng from the national park. But in 1985, the hunter contacted a park service ranger by the name of Dwight McCarter. The ranger put together a group of 30 seasoned rescuers, but they found nothing. They uh, there was a man who in 2002, there was a man who claimed to be Dennis Martin. But authorities concluded that he really wasn't. Personally, if I had to say, I would love to believe that he... I would... If I had to stick with the theory for this. I would say theory number three. It doesn't seem out of possibility because according to William Martin, there was a road where uh where they were last searching that near the area where they were searching that that wasn't far from their campsite. It's possible he walked down that road. I don't know. It seems really strange. Um. Damn. Um. 
Yeah, it seemed really strange for him to... Oh, that bear. So, in the end, this case taught many officials a lesson in how to handle missing people. The park's former deputy superintendent, Kevin Fitzgerald, stated, quote, It's the old adage of it being better to work smarter, not harder. We learned that flooding an area with a huge number of people is not the way to go in all cases because you tend to lose some viable clues and good tracking signs, end quote. Clay Jordan, the park's current deputy superintendent, stated, quote, Human nature, being what it is, we want to have an answer for something. We want to have an explanation. However, for this, however, the answer to what really happened to Dennis Martin these six decades ago in the Smoky Mountains will officially remain unsolved. Um, yeah, I would sure love to know what happened there. I don't know. Um, that's a weird case. Anyways, um, make sure you guys check out the description uh you'll find a link with all my you'll basically find a link where you can find my socials at just everything um all episodes are live on trovo.live forward slash unsolved mysteries that's where you can catch all the episodes live um, yeah, I will try to get this one up as soon as I can, so, better for all of us. I know this is only episode one, so I'm not going to really, well, I would, this is episode one, so I'm not really going to do that much to it. But the more, the further I get into it, the more I will actually add stuff to it, uh, editing-wise. So you can hear some authentic voice and hear some music that will go along with it. And some text and all that. Um, but yeah. That's it for this first episode. Um, let me know what you guys think below. I will have a link where you can actually catch. I will do a live Q&A session where you guys can say if you, if you want to like save some questions about the case below um yeah we'll do a live q a session where you guys can ask me your questions about the episode about this episode uh i will upload this on all the platforms i can get it on so you guys can support in all the ways that you can, let's make this a good journey. And I think I'll probably do two episodes a day. So I'll do this one. I'll do season one by the by the time, short time, season one episode. All the season one episodes will be available to watch. And I'll do live Q and A session where we go through. So what I'll do is, at the end of every season, go through, take it episode by episode, so you guys have all your questions. Um, like I said, save all your questions below. And yeah, that's it. See you in the next episode.